All right, so here we have the DW5000 kick pedal. Before going into the specs of this model, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the neat customization features that you can do and just all the adjustments. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the legend of the DW5000 kick pedal. Um, just the name DW uh, draws so many images to mind, you know, the amazing great drummers of the time. Um, and just the number of artists that play DW drums, uh, Tony Royster Jr., uh, Neil Peart, um, Chad Smith, Terry Bozio, Uncle Joey from Full House. Um, I mean, you name it, if they're a great drummer, at some point in their life, they've at least played with a DW5000 or on DW drums. So the drum workshop started out um, as a music school. They did workshops, different um, private lessons, things like that. Um, but to help start covering their costs, they wanted to start selling gear. Well, Camco Drums, a smaller drum company, uh, went out of business and sold them all their manufacturing equipment. Um, so then DW said, well, we can probably make stuff as well and sell it. So their first big item was the height adjustable drum throne. And riding off the success of that, they were able to up their production and started working on um, other pieces of hardware, namely the DW5000. Uh, so the DW5000 came out first in 1977 uh, with a nylon strap, the nylon straps that they had gotten from Camco's old parts. Then in 1980, they introduced a chain drive driven. This is a double chain model here, um, but you can still get it with a strap or you can get it with a single chain. You can even get it direct drive as well. Um, the next big innovation for DW came in 1985 um, when they launched the double kick pedal. Excuse me, 1983. Give credit where credit's due. 1983, they launched the double kick pedal. So drumming was forever changed uh, from that moment on. Then uh, in 1995, another big piece of equipment that they added to their kick pedals, their hi-hat stands and, and things like that is this Delta bearing system here. Just gives it much more seamless flow. I mean, it's just quiet. So anyway, um, now that we know a little bit about the history of the DW and I mean, just the, the impact it's had on music can't be understated. I mean, it's just some, such a smoother pedal for people uh, in the studio, it was a quieter. It got real thump, the adjustability to fit your playing style. I mean, it, it's had an incredible impact uh, on, on music. So now we have the new generation, the DW5000. Um, first and foremost, uh, start at the footbed here. So each of these pedals comes with rubberized bottoms. So they're already got non-stick surface on there. It also comes with uh, optional Velcro stickers and tape that you can put on there. Um, as well for your drum rug. I find that when I have this hooked to my 22-inch uh, Yamaha Tour Custom Maple Shell, it sits firmly in place, just a little bit. Uh, I can let the drum sit just right with the adjustments I can make, but this doesn't move at all. And I've got my current drum rug is a cheap little $15 rug I bought at Walmart, a five by seven. So I don't use the Velcro, but it, it comes with it, which is nice if you do want to use it. Uh, next thing is the footbed. I happen to really like the red color because you know most of your hardware is all chrome or, or you see kick pedals as black. <clears throat> it's just nice to look down and see a little pop of color. Uh, I don't know when you're playing and, and it just kind of pops from behind the kit. You know, like drummers who see it will know immediately DW5000. You can get mad respect points, I guess. But um, anyway, the next thing is this is the accelerator model. So you can see the shape of the cam here. There's also um, a, uh, another model that is focused more on return rather than speed. So the cam, the amount of chain that has to pull it down is how quickly it can hit the batter, but also how quick it returns. So the accelerator is meant for quick hits, preferred more for, you know, a lot of people are playing like fast doubles, metal kind of stuff, particularly if you go with the double pedal option. Um, they make this with, um, a double option that you can chain out or they make a double bracketed one um, that's already linked up so a lot of again however you want to set it up really it's pretty pretty amazing um, in addition to the footboard like I mentioned the Delta bearing here just absolutely ridiculously smooth action but this is one of my favorite features that often goes uh, unnoticed is the heel plate um, it's made out of really really good uh, steel um, and then it has this sort of uh, rough like grip tape kind of finish in this diamond plating thing. I find, and I'm a heel up player, so when I'm burying the beater, you know, if I'm trying to do really quick 
doubles and my heel comes back down, it's, it's not sliding, it catches it, uh, particularly if you're wearing, you know, like a more athletic type shoe with a rubberized sole. But if you're a heel down player, I mean, it, it just feels great. I've got the same pedal on my, my hi-hats as well, and I rely on that thing to know where I'm going. A um, couple more features about the footbed. These uh, springs here are tension-loaded spikes. So you can also, if you got a really thick rug or, you know, whatever your playing surface is, you can really get on there pretty good. Something that's pretty cool that most people wouldn't think to do is they put a spot for a drum key on there. And DW is awesome in the fact that, well, for many reasons, but in particular, no matter what you buy from them, you're getting a drum key. So you always have drum keys laying around, which is good. You think, oh, I've got one. No, I have probably half a dozen um, all in different spots where I might be doing anything with drums. So to have it <clears throat> clip on right here with your, with your pedal is, is awesome. The next uh, cool feature here is these rubberized feet and the tension on the clamp here. So a, a lot of really high-end pedals um, like Pearl Eliminator, for instance, or, you know, a Tama Speed Cobra or, um, you know, Tama Iron Cobra, um, uh, a 9,000, I don't know what numbers they use, but those higher end pedals like that, even some of the Yamahas and, and stuff, um, they don't come with rubberized grips on these. You have to somehow adjust them or buy a little pad to put them in there. But DW was thoughtful enough to put these little swivels here, and there's one on the top as well, that are rubberized. So no matter what your uh, kick drum hoop is made out of, this is gonna fit securely, tightly, and it's not gonna damage it. Um, like I said, on my Yamaha, I have maple hoops. So on my old uh, kick pedal, which I'll compare with here in a second, it's all metal underneath there. We just scratch up and ruin the wood. No one wants to have to replace their hoop because their pedal is too tight. So <clears throat> another easy feature to get your pedal attached is they put the key to turn it right here on the side. So there's no more reaching underneath there or, around the back and trying to tighten it by just pushing it around, which again, I'll show you on the other pedal. So you can see it just lowers that lever until you get a nice firm grip on your kick drum. It's, it, it's again though, it's, it's the little things with DW that I appreciate. It's just the attention to detail, the things that they really make things that a drummer wants. They, they are drummers, so they're making it from that perspective instead of some other music company that also makes drum hardware. Um, another awesome feature about this drum though is that the amount of adjustments you can do with the cam angle and with the spring tension, also the beater. So they give you these Allen wrenches and if you want to take the beater out, if I can get that Allen wrench in there. See, it's got a little memory lock that can slide, which again, small little feature, but goes a long way, particularly if you're going to be, you know, gigging a lot and you need to set up quick. Um, that's a great little feature to have. Uh, DW puts memory locks on just about everything, so um, not, not a surprise that they would have had one there as well. Turn that back up. All right, and so with the spring tension, you can see these different angles. You can set this as high or as far back as you want for the return angle. Um, right out of the box, it came at about this 45 degree angle, which I typically like. Like I said, I bury the beater. I'm, I'm a heel up player. So for me, that that distance is about what I, I know, right? Um, and the thing I like about this spring tensioning too is how easy it is. You just pop the spring off here. If you loosen this nut there what you do is you can pull down the spring here and then you can make really fine adjustments if you want more tension or you tighten it up for less tension again i like mine about right where it came out of the box you know that's that's good for me i can still you know feel the drum um with the uh the beater buried, but also I can get the response I want and the speed. So now just to give you a quick comparison between, you know, why someone would pay 
you know, $300 for a brand new pedal when you're like, oh, well, what about my old pedal? Well, from the looks, you know, they're, they're basically the same, right? Same principles. This beater angle's a little bit higher, right? You can see from the sides and the back. Both beds are about the same. Tam is actually just a touch longer. But look, remember some of those key features I was telling you about on the VW you're not getting here. So while this does have some rubberized surface, it's pretty bare right there. So this would be, if I wasn't on carpet at my apartment, then you know we would probably want to put some Velcro on there to stick on the rug. The tension uh, knob is a little bit harder to deal with. Um, it's just not quite as easy. You know, you have this two-way lug thing that you pull out, take it off. It's It seems like this is a better way for me, but also the, sp the quality of the spring and you also notice this is a floating bearing. So if you look here, we can hear everything moving, but also look at the spring. It's fixed to this bar here. Whereas with the DW, watch the spring. So it's, since it's free floating, that eliminates a lot of that extra squeaky noise that you might recognize from some 70s records. I happen to like that noise in certain contexts, but it makes a huge difference when you're playing just how fluid everything is about it. Um, similar sort of cam adjustments. You can adjust the chain here for different tensions if, uh, if you wanted uh, a more aggressive beater angle or, or, or not. You certainly can adjust the beater height as well. But you know, if this is a, maybe a $90 pedal versus you know, a $300 pedal, um, the quality is not even close, right? Um, remember I told you about that rubber edge you can see under there. There's like metal teeth and there's this awkward hitch. So I have to hold the pedal up and spin it down as opposed to just being here, right here on the side, nice and easy. Um, so yeah, that's a quick little tour overview of the DW5000. Um, I think out of all the gear I own, um, including my drums, that this is probably my favorite uh, thing that I own. Um, it's the thing I'm probably the closest with because I'm always making contact with it, but it won't let you down. They're guaranteed for life as well, and they just look cool too. So anyway, um, go out and get you the DW5000, man.